Hi everybody, welcome to the Coleco Adam for Dummies. This is a series of videos I'm going to make where I take the time to explain various aspects of the Coleco Adam hardware, software, peripherals, how they work in a very toned down, as little as possible, as little techno babble as possible, so that anybody can get it. It's not an aspiration on anybody, an aspersion, I'm sorry, it's not an aspersion on anybody by saying it's the Coleco Atom for dummies. It's more of a play on the dummies manuals that exist out there. So, I hope you enjoy this video. Hi everybody, I want to do a real quick video on how to properly ship something. I know I'm not an expert in shipping, but I've been shipping Atom computers now for seven years and I've had only one thing get damaged and that was a printer that I shipped to Ireland and it was a learning lesson because I did not realize that the print head could move around so it moved around and it knocked itself loose and I was able to walk the guy through it and how to fix it. Other than that, I've never had an atom get damaged in shipping. So, the way you prepare something to ship is you bubble wrap the shit out of it. Excuse my language. When you, if you sell this, if you're selling a computer, you need to take the fact that this giant roll of bubble wrap here, which I'm not going to use all of it, I'm going to use a bunch of it. This, you know, the outside's a little wet. This giant roll of bubble wrap here costs 20 bucks. You have to take that into account when you were selling something. You have to put that in your shipping. You can't just say, okay, UPS, will, or the, no UPS, the post office will ship this for $14.99, so my shipping's $14.99, because you're going you're gonna to screw yourself every time. You need to take into account that it costs you something to ship it. Box, tape, shipping material. This right here is probably going to use, not half of this, but eh, say half. So you, you, could, you could honestly say, I need to throw in 10 bucks for shipping. Now, the customer may not, not like that. They may say, why are you charging me $30 to ship it? Well, you know what? If that's the case, then you, instead of putting the extra $10 or $15 on top of shipping, you take that extra $10 or $15 and you throw it on the price. You, uh, unless you're willing to eat that price, you have to put in your sale price the cost of what it's going to take for you to package it up and ship it. Because if you just say, well, I sold something for $99.95 and... I'm shipping it for 12 bucks, and I bought it myself for 80 bucks. I'm only making $20 on it. I'm not going to bother worrying about shipping it. I'm just going to put it in a box. I'm going to throw one layer of bubble wrap around it and maybe some paper in here to try to take up the space. And the box is going to be either be six inches too big or the box is going to be right up against the edge. Both of them are wrong. Then you're, going to, you're taking a chance of that thing ending up busted. And then you're going to have to eat it on refund cost. Wrap it and wrap it correctly. So let's see, I'm going to wrap this up here. Let's take off the little, little the big bubble sticky thing up there. I'll save that. Let's take that on somebody's windshield. Really tick them off. Make their day. Now the first thing, excuse me while I get in the way. First thing I'm going to do is, this is the one that I added the internal power supply to. This, it's very secure in there, but you don't know what this thing's going to go through, bouncing and vibrating. So I don't want this, and then this is a big gap in here too. You don't want nothing supporting it. So the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a chunk of bubble wrap. I'm going to fold up. I'm going to take more than this chunk. This ain't big enough. Put that to the side. Take a bigger chunk of bubble wrap. And I'm just going to build me a pillow that's going inside of here. That's going to wrap it up with this one, support the door and everything else with it. Yeah, no, it's too thick. I want to support the door and everything else with it. Here we go. So I'm bubble wrapping the inside, filling that big void there as such. I'm going to take this, put this back on here. Now this one happens to be broken so it doesn't snap into place. So what I'm going to do then is, reach down here. Grab my tape, which always happens to get. Actually, you know what? For this one right here, I'm going to use remember, scotch tape. 
for this because this is not packaging. I just want to tape that closed there. And I'm going to take a little note. Well, let's get a clean piece of paper with a note. I'm going to write on it. Open and remove bubble wrap. Why do I say that? Because there are some people that won't. They won't think to remove the packing material. So, let's put a little note on there. Now, this doesn't have to be super superior because this is going to be held on real quick with the bubble wrap. Now, to make this thing safe and so it doesn't go anywhere, I am going to turn it into a pillow. And how am I going to do that? Bubble wrap. Set this aside. Take my bubble wrap and lay it out here. Lay this down. I'll put it this way. This way. My cord's going to come down here on the end. Let's come down here a little further so I get the overhang on the top. Take my overhang up here. My cord. Stay there. Cord. Stay there. Thank you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pillow. I'm going to take I'm going to fold this over. And I'm going to fold this over. And I'm going to keep doing this until I have about an inch worth of bubble wrap going this way. Half inch, inch, thereabouts. Now I had an issue here, my wire moved, so I want my wire to come back down here. A little bit, all right. And that there, okay. Now, take that. This is just temporary. I will be using packing tape to totally secure it when I'm done. Now that I got that, let's take my bubble wrap again. I'm going to go from this end. And again, I'm going to wrap it as such. And then I'm going to, since I have a bigger piece here, I'm going to take this, tape this up here. I'm going to wrap again on the other side. So you see got this gap here. So I want to get that covered. As such, see where this is going? See how tight this thing is? I mean, this basically, we have now over an inch and a half of bubble wrap around this, and I'm still not done. Now what I'm going to do is, now I'm going to fix my tape. Where's the end? Take my tape. And I'm going to tape the bubble wrap. That way. That way. And then, see we have these corners, which are not, corners are not your friend. Corners are the worst part. They need to be secured independently. So I'm going to take another chunk of bubble wrap, like so, fold it down, try to make me some corners. Get my little scotch tape just to hold it in place. I mean, most of this should be obvious, but a lot of people, when they ship things, they just don't care. They so, especially if they're selling via eBay, it's like, I sold it, I don't care. Or, looks good to me. They don't have the experience of having shipped a whole bunch of stuff, or they don't care. And it's like, I sold it, I don't care. It's no longer mine, it's your problem. I put it in a box, I'm going to send it out. Which is a really bad attitude to have when you're trying to sell things on eBay or anywhere else and you want to, you don't want people to ding you. Because, let me tell you right now, you're selling things on eBay and they get their damage. 
you're, you're going to refund them. You're going to refund them their money, or you're going to have to want something out to make them happy, because they will complain to eBay, and guess who wins when they complain to eBay? <laughs> the buyer wins every time. And some people, and this is what's sad, because some people do this on Facebook, they brag about the fact that when they get something, if they see it has a scratch, even if they didn't see it in the picture, but if it has a scratch, and obviously the scratch didn't come from the shipping, but it has a scratch or anything, or they're just not happy. They immediately complain to eBay that it was damaged. And how, and how is the seller going to defend himself when the buyer has the item? The buyer has the item. The seller can't look at it. Can't say, no, look, it's not broke or anything like that. They just, they just have basically when you, when somebody, when a seller complains on eBay and you, or when a buyer complains on eBay, you basically got to bend over and take it because there is no saying, uh-uh, because eBay won't care. Which makes sense. It's good that the seller has protection, but, or the buyer has protection, but it's not good because a lot of people would now take advantage of that. Now, that may look like crap. Test. That's where this comes in. Now we start secure those corner plates like so, like so. See, you just keep in mind. Not only do you want to pad your item well, you also want to make it so that the item cannot move. And not tape. If the item can move around inside the box, you are risking it getting damaged. Because yeah, you wrap it up on your kitchen table or wherever you're sending it from. And then you put it in your car and you take it down to your post office and you give it to the mailman and the whole time you've taken care of that and you know you carry it gingerly because you don't want to break it and all that good stuff and everything's good. And then what do you think happens once the post office gets it? Or UPS gets it or FedEx gets it. That's right. They throw it in the back of a truck. Well they probably throw it in a bin first. Then in the back of the truck. And now I say throw. I mean, I'm not throwing that as a joke. They throw it. It gets thrown. So, if you're shipping something and you put it in a box, if you are not 100% comfortable of, oops, dropping it five feet and it not getting broke, you better pad it. This ain't going nowhere. Look at that. It's solid. I can stand on it if I want to. I won't do that, but I can stand on it. Now, since you now have it padding nicely, and I'm going to take one of my Retro Gamers Club post goes on it because he's not a member. I just make a little, little roll of tape on the back just to make it stay there. Now we need to put it in the box. I'm not sure which box I'm going to use. This is the box that the client sent me when it came in. It may be good enough. See, he sent it to me. He had it in a static bag, which is not necessary, and then had a layer of bubble wrap around the outside. Note the crushed boxes, or crushed corners. Yeah, FedEx, either they dropped it or they decided that, you know what, we could set this on this side and put a whole bunch of weight on top and it flattened it out. I may or may not use this. I'm going to look at this right now and just see how big this is. I don't want six inches of space on it. That didn't work. Uh, that could work. This box, I'm just going to tape this on the top instead of a little bump on it. This could work. See, you have about three inches all around the side, but the box is really ugly. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Which way do I want to go? Let me look. I'm going to pause this for a second and see if I have a better box. All right, so I do have a better box here, another Amazon box. I've been buying a lot of stuff from Amazon. Amazon loves to have big boxes with hardly anything in it. So, this will fit in there much better. Now I got like about an inch of space around. Now, the problem is, is the height is wrong. Or is, um, actually it may be okay. 
Let's just see. I don't want to. Eh, this box would work, but I, I don't like the height. That box, the height is off too, is it? Let's see. This box, the height is good. I just don't like the outside. You know what I can do? All right. I'm going to do this. This box right here. I'm going to take this box. Yeah, I'm not going to ship it like that because I don't like that. Because you get a little bulge like that, guess what? That's just begging for somebody to sit something heavy on it. Just got to keep... Always, lots of noise. Always keep in mind that the people that are handling your packages when you're shipping them, that's their job. That's all they do is ship, move these things around all day. They could care friggin' less what's inside of it. They don't care. And I would not be surprised because we're all human. Every now and then, if they drop something that goes ting and breaks, they're like, <laughs> got another one right down on the wall. People are human. Do they want to do that? No, but they, they get a little kick out of it. So I'm going back to the other box. And this time, I'm going to. Hang on, this has the thing on the outside I got to take off. That that kind of stupid bill of lading for no reason. Sorry, I'm blocking it, but I don't want you to see addresses that are written on it. Alright, so now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this box, put it inside that box. See? I just double walled it. But I still got that gap there. See, you still got that gap all around. How am I going to take care of that gap? Now I'm going to take care of that gap with... Craft paper. Very sturdy. Great gap filler. Don't use it as your only packing medium, but it's a great gap filler. And let me open up my crap, my crap paper and I'll get some more out. You use it, you just bundle up a chunk, stick it in a crack, keep doing that, you fill in the gaps and it hardly takes up any weight. The other thing you can do too is packing peanuts. Packing peanuts are your friends. But if you're using packing peanuts, make sure anything you are shipping is inside of some kind of container, a bag, something. You do not want to ship somebody a computer and have it get to them loaded in packing peanuts up inside the circuit board. They will not be happy. And if you do get packing peanuts, go to U-Haul or someplace similar, and they make biodegradable ones. That when they get wet, they just dissolve. Makes it a lot easier to get rid of. So what I've done here is I'm just packing the outside of this in the, as a gap. The box, it's already totally protected in this box. I just want to fill that gap out so there's not any thing that can break. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape the hell out of this to make it stay together. We have to get these FedEx bags off of it. No wonder FedEx charges so much, all this stuff. You, you want a packing invoice on the outside of the box? No, I'm okay. I don't need an invoice to tell me what's in the box. I can open it up and see. I never understood that. Whenever I do shipping, they want to, you want to make a packing slip? Mm, not. There's one item in the box that doesn't need a packing slip. There's 50, you might need one. But at that point, shouldn't you have an invoice and not rely on some of the packing slips? Anyway, here we go. We're going to take this thing up solid now. And she's going to be ready to go. First band across just to keep it closed. Down here. One down that side. One down that side. One down the middle. Do not rely on tape sticking to the cardboard. Depends on the box, depends on the humidity. It's raining outside now, so nothing wants to stick. So, rely on tape sticking to tape. When you take your top, come down and take your bottom. Put the tape on the tape. Otherwise, in transit, your tape will decide that it no longer wants to be taped and it will just come off. Make little streamers. Now, see, yeah, this still has a little bends in there. What I'm going to do now is take and tape around the outside. 
never stress it so much that tape is your friend. In the past, I had to ship a, I believe it was an Osborne computer overseas. And if you know anything about the Osborne, they are like a sewing machine case. They're unlockable and they're about 30 some pounds. Worth of All solid plastic. And wrapping it in bubble wrap wouldn't have worked. Trying to wrap it in styrofoam wouldn't have worked that well. So what I did is I went to my local Walmart and they had those, this is during the winter, they had those fleece blankets, those throws. I went and got four of them, wrapped it in the throw, first put it in a bag to protect it, then wrapped it in a throw, and when I was done it had about that much cotton padding on the outside of it. Then I put it in the box and filled it with tacky peanuts. Then it went overseas. It arrived about two weeks later, the guy opened it up, it said not a scratch, as happy as heck, and he said thank you for the extra blankets. Cost me ten bucks for those blankets. But I knew as soon as I boxed it, like this, I know as soon as I box this, and I take this to the post office, I'm not going to have to worry about it again. It's going to get there alive, it's going to get there undamaged. So when you package things, make sure always overwrap, package the heck out of it. Now some of you may have ordered things for me, you may be ordering like the RAM board and other things and when you get them, you open the box and you see that it's it's filled with um, the small box, because they, they only weigh like about four or five ounces cartridges, you see that the box is packed up with these. This works just as well. I pack it up with that and that's environmentally conscious in a way because I order boxes and the company I order from feels that I need to have a catalog every two months. I'm never going to use these and I used to throw them away or recycle them. Now what I do? I shred them and they become packing material. Great use, reuse. So that's what we got there. I'm going to pause this, I'm going to weigh this up, I'm going to measure it, bound up the label and I'm going to show you what it costs to ship it. All right, I measured it. It's 20 by 15 by 7. That's in inches. Weighs 10 pounds. Well, actually weighs 9 and 3 quarter pounds, but I have 10. The way I weigh things is I'll take and I'll put this in a big bag, and then I use my luggage scale to weigh it. But if you don't have a luggage scale, here's a really easy thing to weigh things. As long as they weigh something. If you got something that weighs like 5 pounds or less, that's going to be kind of hard to do it this way. You may have to rely on the post office for that. But if you want to weigh it yourself... And say, say the whole thing weighs, no, oh, no, it's hefty. This right here is good enough. Stand on the scale. See how much you weigh. Get off the scale. Pick this up. Stand on the scale. See how much you weigh. Subtract that weight from your first weight. That's how much this weighs. Add a pound. That way you cover it. You do not want to, like this, I said this weighed 9 and 3 quarters pound. If I put on here that this was 9 pounds, 12 ounces, that's the, the amount I paid for shipping. And I take it to my post office or my local... And they're okay, and they take it, and it gets halfway across the country to, I don't know, Arizona or something like that. And the local post office in Arizona weighs and says, hey, this thing weighs 10 pounds, not 9 pounds and 3 quarters. I don't want them sending it back to me saying, postage due. Because I just totally wasted that whole ship and the money I paid. Add an extra pound. What's it, another dollar? Throw it in your shipping cost. Throw it in your pricing. Never, ever, ever, ever. Put the exact amount of how much it's going to cost you to ship on eBay. When I put things on eBay and I give them the I, eBay tells me how much does it weigh, I say okay. I, I tell it the specs so they can give me how I want to ship it. If I think there's a little wiggle room there, I, I need to cover my shipping supplies. I throw in a two dollar shipping and or two dollar handling charge on it. I don't care. The customer is going to die and not buy my thing because of the extra two dollars. Well, they can. Well, they can go somewhere else and get it because most of the stuff I sell, you can't get anywhere else. I make it myself. But if they're gonna if they're gonna be losing it over that extra two dollars for handling, then they don't need to buy your thing in the first place. If you don't want to do that, if you want to, oh, I don't want my customer to know that I'm gonna charge them two dollars extra, five dollars extra for the bubble wrap, then put it in your price. 
If you want to sell something, you say, I need to sell this for $50 and it's going to cost me $5 in packing materials and sale. Well, your sale price is $55. Unless you're willing to eat that cost, you should always include what it costs you to package it up. And if you're doing it right, if you're really trying to make eBay a thing or make shipping a thing, you need to put in there the cost of how much time it takes you to do something. I just spent 20 minutes packaging this. If I wanted to say, yeah, I want to get paid $15 an hour, well, guess what? 20 minutes, $15 an hour? This is $5 it took me. It cost me $5 of my time to package this. Do I eat that? Yeah, I'm eating it on this one. But on other ones, I don't. I will put that in there. It goes in there somewhere in the cost of it. If I'm selling a hundred of things, then I can spread that cost out. You never see it. So some people are like, well, you're selling something for a hundred dollars, but I can, you know, I can find it somewhere else for ninety. Well, go get it. Good. Tell me where you're getting it for ninety. I will get it for ninety. I'll sell it for a hundred, make a ten dollar profit without doing anything. But anyways, I'm gonna go print a label now, and then I'll tell you the cost. Alright, so, packaged it up and got the label. Priority two-day mail to where he's at, and I'm hiding the address so you can't see it. He is in Missouri. I'm in Pennsylvania. 1502 to send it to him. Priority two-day mail to the post office. I could have saved and saved $1.47 by shipping it parcel. Take five days. Why? At that point, the dollar if I'm going to make or break on $1.47, I need to throw that into the cost. I try to use priority mail. If I look at something and I see that priority mail, I'm sending a small thing. I'm sending a small, thick envelope, padded envelope, whatever. And I see that priority mail is going to cost me $4.95 or $5, and they'll get it in two days. And first class mail is going to cost me $3.25, and they'll get it in two to three days. It's going first class mail. Because at that point, you're not getting anything. But when you have three, four days difference, I mean, I, I've been there. I've been in one of those ones that looked at the tracking and said, where the hell is my item? Why is it taking so long? So, there we go. Package ready to go. This will arrive, no problem. And the other thing, keep in mind also, placement of label. Don't put it on the side. You put a label on the side, it will set it down flat, stack stuff on top of it. You don't want things stacked on top of it? Think about, well, maybe you do want them stacked on top of it. Think about how you want this thing to be stacked in the truck, in the bin. Because they need to scan things. So they like to put them in so they can scan them. You put it on the side, they're going to stack it so it's like this, so the label's up. You put it on the top, they're going to stack it like this, so the label's either out. They're going to they're gonna stack it a certain way. This way, right here, I don't mind them putting it on the top or on the side. This is a good spot for it right here. And a little sticky coming off, so better move that way. So there you go. I mean, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to do things. I just want to show you. You can confidently package things up and ship it, and you can not lose money doing it. Think about it. How many times have you ordered things from Amazon, or actually, screw Amazon. Have you ordered anything from AliExpress or overseas, and you get it, and there's not even a bump on it? And yet, you know this thing just went around the world. Why did it not? How did it arrive on damage? Because they packaged it right. And yet you order something from 50 miles down the road, the next town over, and it gets to you and it looks like a fucking truck, excuse my language, it looks like a truck ran it over because they didn't package it right. Have a good day.